Hello and welcome back. It's mid-May 2015. I wanted to share with you a new bat habitat design that I've made on the fly today. Um, which I want to put in the woods, which I'll, I'll take you through in a minute. I thought I'd also give you an update on the solitary bee habitats, which are doing really well, as usual. Every year I've definitely got an addiction. Every year there's more and more insects in my garden, which drives my addiction and need to create, <laughs> which I've been doing a lot this year. I've got, I think I've got like, I think in the garden, 15 solitary bee habitats now and the, as quick as I make them they, they just fill them up um, I made these two and I did a time lapse recently which you may have seen they've now finished and the the lids are on the roofs on there and they're doing really well this one here is uh, medium sized bees I've made that for so you look at your, your red mason bees and your tawny mining bees interestingly there's a little tiny bee you can just see the size of the bees in the garden they range from you know quite a decent size to little micro bees and um there's one there and 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 i've noticed that they're quite new well maybe not noticed because you wouldn't notice them anyway but they're definitely new to the habitats i've not seen them this is the first year and there's another little guy over here which is uh just sitting there i they look like bees i can't actually get in close enough to see I might have to get my macro lens out later. But I, I think they are. Um, this one, like, is medium bees, as I said. And they've already, in the last two weeks, you can see that... Now, that is earth, so that would be a mason bee. Um, and he's already in there. And I, and I take it that fourth one down has been broken out of... Or, or maybe in the process of being built, because uh, they've only been up a couple of weeks, so it can't be last year's insects. But the whole garden is, is full of solitary bees and doing really well. Um, this smaller one is uh, where I'd expect to see the smaller bees and certainly have. They've been in and out of there too. If you've got an addiction like me, then uh, maybe we need to start a Insects Anonymous Club because uh, the more I do this, the more I want to do it. And it's a great hobby. And you're doing some real good with uh, your life if you're if you're doing stuff like this because bees are the most threatened or well, one of the most threatened insects on the planet and without them we're all kind of stuffed so you know anything you can do well, I'm sure they'd be grateful if they could speak okay so anyway enough fluff down to business you can see the garden in the background there and um, it's just about to bloom come into bloom the garden it's not quite there but everything's got heads on it we've got vetch there and creeping buttercups and germander speedwell forget-me-nots and a load of oxeye daisy this year which um which is full of loads of different beetles and insects which i'm assuming um thrive just on on oxeye daisies because whenever I have oxeye daisy I have these guys which I do know and do have ID'd but have completely forgotten but they love it and they're all over it this time of year shield bugs of some description I'll find the um the name and, and put it in the uh, in the link but um they're doing really well this year the vetch too is, is covered in um in bees um this year it's doing really well the whole garden, I think, is going to explode in the next couple of weeks into colour because everything's got heads on it, as I said, and it's all it's all going to come out. So anyway, the business. Um, I uh, had loads of recycled wood and I I wanted to build something for up in there. That's a piece of woodland that I'm renovating. It's about half an acre, but it's been totally destroyed over the last 30 years. And um, I'm kind of bringing it back. I've done a third of it and I'm, I'm going to seed it with uh, sort of um, wood anemones and um, English bluebells to ne probably next year now. But what I wanted to do was get some habitats for, for bats. And I've always wanted bats and never had them. I, I do have a habitat for bats, which I built years ago. I don't think I've ever done a video of it. But it's up there. It's kind of a weird design, as a lot of my stuff is. I kind of just get a saw out and a hammer and off I go. There's 
this one is kind of a four chambered design one facing each axis of a compass the idea being that any bats could choose um, where they wanted to be um, and obviously different temperature ranges and it's, some of it's in the sun, some of it's cool so I thought that might be a good idea but I've never actually seen any bats going in there but I will keep an eye out and let you know if I see any Pond's doing really well loads of newts I, had a, I did a newt survey again this year and in a small area I found 12 newts in, in an area that less than a foot um, so there, I think there's probably in the two ponds because I have one up there um, probably a couple of hundred newts not seen the infamous um, juvenile or, or neotonic great crested that I saw once but I do have a video and it's, it's still on the video from years ago so if you fancy IDing it and having a look I've had frog life on the case and Kent Wildlife Trust, Trust and, and no one's been able to ID it successfully or confirm at least confirm that it is a great crested juvenile but I hope it is because it will be awesome other than that it's the palmates and the smooth newts which are prevalent in here and there are hundreds so it's really good so I keep getting diverted away from the main attraction here so these two um, bat boxes have been stained now basically um, it's, it's decking uh, predominantly decking at the back turned with the main slats on the inside of the box because decking uh, normally has two patterns um, the slatted pattern and the, the not so slatted pattern now assuming that the bats will want to land on the bottom here and then crawl up underneath I think that's going to be the best um, design to use. Bats are not my forte, so if you do have a lot of experience of bats, you can give me any pointers, um, please uh, do so. Um, I've got a lot of shiplap left over up in the shed, just take my hands, um, which I've used to clad the bat box. I haven't put any stain inside, and nor should you. It's best to avoid it. The only reason I've used stain and PVA, which I'll go through in a minute, anyway it is to protect the wood because it is recycled wood and putting it up in a wood will mean that it's dark and wet and it will last literally less than a couple of years so if you have the stain and make sure it's low VOC which is volatile organic compound the PVA I always PVA my stuff it's a habit but it does seal stuff PVA is inherently low VOC and the five-year wood preserver that I use is medium VOC you probably be able to see it just here it gives you a um, the the VOC content on anything you buy that has a, like this stain and what have you and it will tell you and obviously stay away from creosote or these um, the best way to d describe them is they're, they're kind of they're not water soluble but creosote will wash off and then go into the groundwater and, and they are high VOC. I know creosote's outlawed in the UK but you can get creosote with a C instead of an S. Um, and I think it's, you know, if you're doing wildlife gardening it probably has its place but wildlife gardening isn't it. So if you can stay away from anything high VOC, it preferably stay away from all stain if, if you can. But um, I have this stuff left over so I'm using it. But medium or low is obviously preferable. Um, the entrance to the bat box, we have 18 species of bat in the UK and um, they're all ha suffering from habitat loss, um, you know, chemicals, cats, you name it, they're all in, in pretty much need our help um, and they do offer, you know, excellent pest control. Um, they eat, can eat a pipistrelle bat, can eat 3,000 insects a night, you know, sort of what we would, con uh, for me, no insect is a pest, I'm, I'm an insect lover. Um, but, you know, some people think that mosquitoes are pests, I actually let them go out of my water butts because I'm a bit weird. But anyway, they, they offer good pest control, they do seed dispersal obviously through their droppings, um, and probably some other benefits too. But the pipistrelle is what I'm aiming for here, the most common bat. And the consensus seems to be a 15 mil gap and um, so they land on here and crawl up underneath these things will stand upright like so oh, I can't even see that in the sun but and um, there's a slight pitch on the roof so the water runs off and I've left an overhang on the shiplap all the way around to give it some protection from rain as well 
but um, I think they'd be quite good. I'm not sure I'm going to hang them on the trees. I never got around to that. Like I say, I grabbed a hammer, grabbed a saw, and off I went. Um, I think they'll be good. I'm hoping to get some bats because I've not been lucky with bats. It's the one thing. That and grass snakes and adders seem to hate me for some reason. They probably know I've got a, such an attraction to solitary bees that they probably think they haven't got a look in. But um, if you can give me any pointers with bats, it would be really appreciated. By the same token, if you want the plans to these um, or specific measurements and stuff, I'd be more than happy to help. But obviously, like, this, like I always say, if you can... If you can go to your local fencing place or wood yard, you can get as, you know, normally they're pretty good. If you explain you're doing wildlife gardening and, and what it's for, southern fencing near me are awesome. They've given me so much wood over the years. And it's all stuff that, you know, gets burnt and incinerated normally. But it's perfect material for recycling into habitats like this. So any pointers, let me know. Um, I will drop the names of those insects, because it's, it's starting to bug me now, if you pardon the pun, um, into the uh, description later, once I get indoors. But anything you need to know, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.